do these concerts and we invite people and we pass out flyers uh, to simply just draw a crowd to preach the gospel. Amen. And uh, I, I was, um, so now I'm going to preach the gospel. Amen. So praise God. There's a story I was reading about a young man named Larry uh, uh, Fuji and he uh, is, uh, uh, was, was born in China and uh, when he was just a small baby, his parents moved from China and they came uh, here to the States. And they decided we're going we're gonna to teach our son English because we're now in America now. And so we want him to know English. And so they begin to teach him uh, English. And he never learned uh, Mandarin. And the, the problem was is that his, his mom uh, learned English and also spoke Mandarin. But his father never learned English. So as he begins to get older, he, they, they realize a problem that this young boy named Larry can't talk to his dad. His dad only speaks Mandarin. He only speaks English. And so this guy's story is funny because he says, I lived in a house with this guy that was my dad, but I never had a conversation with him. He couldn't speak English. I couldn't speak Mandarin. And so we just kind of stared at each other. And he says, you know, the most awkward thing is that we would have dinner and my mom wasn't there. We would sit there, me and my dad, and have dinner. And we'd sit there and we would kind of stare at each other and we would eat in awkward silence. <laughs> and that's just weird. <laughs> and he says, I grew up like that. man. I would, I would just walk right past my dad. He says, I, it was almost like I was just walking past a brick wall. Because we couldn't talk. I didn't know what he was thinking. He didn't know what I was thinking. And so we just kind of, that just was our life now. I just, we don't talk to each other. You do your thing, I do my thing. Uh, and he said that his dad knew uh, two words in English. He, he could ask him, healthy? Like, you're not dying, right? <laughs> healthy? And he would say, yes or no. Or he would say, hungry? And he would say, you know, yes or no. And that's the only... That's the only communication they had with each other. He, he began to just grow up this way, and it was normal. His dad worked 15 hours a day. They never really saw each other. He never really even thought that his dad thought anything of him. He just was just there. He was just a guy that was just there. And the father had a, a business back in, in China, and it started to really take off. And so he had to go back to China and run this business uh, full time and he left his wife and his son here in the States and before he left he wrote this this letter this six page letter to his son and on this letter he begins to pour out his heart to his 15 year old boy and he begins to tell him listen I feel guilty that we've never had a conversation I feel guilty that, that I never learned English I feel guilty that we never tried to teach you Mandarin. I feel guilty that I haven't been there to tell you how, how to grow up and how to be a man. And, and he begins to tell him, listen, I'm proud of the man that you've become. I'm proud of who you become. You do good in school. And, and, and he begins to give him advice and just really pour out his heart on six pages of paper. And as this little kid, Larry, is reading this, this, this letter, he says, literally, this was the first time that I have ever even heard my dad's thoughts. I didn't even know he had thoughts in his head. And here's the first time he talked directly to me. And he began to tell me that I love you. I'm proud of you. You're doing a good job. I'm not worried about you when I leave. I know you're going to take care of mom. And he says he begins just to weep in tears. Because this guy that he walked past. Every day, he says, I didn't even think he had thoughts toward me. I, I just thought he was a robot or a, a, just a brick wall. I wouldn't even talk to each other. We would just kind of awkwardly look at each other. When we met eyes, we kind of just looked away quickly, and he walked that way, and I walked this way. And all of a sudden, he, you know, his dad pours out his heart in a letter. And he's so inspired about who this guy is. Man, this is my dad. I'm just getting to know him. And he begins to learn Mandarin and, and, and begins to chase this relationship with his dad and his dad feels so guilty and I, it's a, really a remarkable story growing up with, in a house with a person that you don't even know and I thought about that and I thought you know that, that's interesting because the Bible says that we are all made in the image of God yeah. we are made in the image of God that's what makes you special that's why 
A dog can die and very little people cry, but when a person dies, there's something special there. Because we're made in the image of God. And people, they treat God like that young kid treated his father. They pass by God like he's just a, a wall. You awkwardly go to church sometimes, right? You're like, oh God, what am I doing here? You know, I shouldn't be here. And you leave. <laughs> You see a Bible every once in a while at your grandma's house, right? You kind of close it because it's somehow less dangerous if you close it. <laughs> and you're just, this is awkward thing with you and God. There is no God. Yeah, that's what I'll go with. I'm an atheist. Science. I'll roll with that. And there's some people here tonight... I'm here to tell you the, go the gospel news. The good news is that your father, your heavenly father, has wrote you a letter. Amen. He's wrote you a letter. And in this letter, you get to know his thoughts. Mm. Come on. You know, I was 16 years old when I got saved. And when I got saved, I, I had just a spirit of condemnation. I felt sorry for myself, right? You're out there in the crowd, you're like, I feel sorry for you, Adam, just look at you. <laughs> you're pigeon-toed, you know. <laughs> really white. <laughs> oh and, you know, when I was 16 years old, I, I, I began to just read God's Word. And, and, you know, somebody gave me some good advice. And read God's Word and read it as if God is writing it to you. And as I got older, I began to, to understand what this meant, that I'm going to take God's word, every word that's in this Bible, as if he's speaking it to me. Amen. And you should do the same thing, that God has wrote you a letter. And that he's not just this silent, distant person who doesn't know you even Come exist. On. Some of you think that. Some of you think, you know what, God's angry with me. He's frustrated with me. God is he's cold and he's distant. He's far away. He's not there. God has his favorites. Some of you tonight, you think that way. God has his favorites. Well, that's fine. You can have your favorites. I don't like you either. And the truth is, is that's not how God feels about you at all. And then the word of God tells us, amen, in uh, Jeremiah 29, 11, the Bible, uh, the Bible begins to say, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you. This is God speaking to you. He says, I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. That's how God thinks about you. Some of you tonight, you think God is, is angry with you. You think, you know, God's, he's mad at me, man, because I've messed up and I've, I've sinned and I've done all kinds of crazy things. There's no way that God can even like me. And yet his word, his letter says something totally different. The famous scripture, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. That's what God thinks of you. The Bible talks about in Romans 8, it begins to speak about how God literally wants to adopt us into his family and call us his sons and his daughters. And we'll cry out, Abba, Father. You're here tonight, you think, man, you know what, me and God, it's awkward. It's, it's complicated between me and God, right? The truth is, is that you have a, a, a wrong, and a, you have a misconception of who he is and what he thinks towards you. Because his word says something totally different. And at 16 years old, I gave my life to Jesus. And I begin to see God for who he really is. I begin to trust that the God of the Bible... He's the God who really exists. And all that there was left for me to do is to believe in and on him. And he changed my life. Amen. I would like every head bowed and every eye closed and reverence for God, please.